All right, so you guys were having fun at Long Beach Comic Con, and we're sitting with Arthur Russell Nolte. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. So you've got to tell me about your books, okay? Because give, give me the rundown, because we came here earlier, and you had some awesome stuff going on over here. So, uh, All right, can I curse on your show? Uh. <laughs> I'll, I'll do the non-cursing version. You're yeah, like, do the non-cursing version. You're like, girls that kick butt are psychological mind screws. Okay, you know what? Give me a, a short rundown of both because our audience might like both. All right, so Katrina Hates the Dead is our uh, best-selling book. It's about a girl who gets sick of living during the apocalypse. It's about a girl who gets sick of living during the apocalypse. She just sets out to hell to kill the devil. Our first book is Ichabod Jones' Monster Hunter. It's about a girl who gets, it's about a psychopath that escapes a mental asylum and becomes a monster hunter. She never knows if he's killing monsters, humans, or it's all in his head the whole time. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and so let's. I want you to think back for when you first started. What inspired you to to first write and decide that you know what this is what I wanted to do. This is how I want to make my money, and I'm going to be dedicated to this and be here now. All right. So I got in a car accident. Uh, I was I was a writer and director back in D.C. I got in a car accident, and uh, the only thing I could really do was write. So I started writing, and I started. Hearing things like, you have to write 10 novels or 10 projects before you get any good. So it came my mission to write 10 projects as quickly as humanly possible. And I wrote TV and movies for a while. And then uh, I moved into doing comics after that really didn't work out. And then novels after that. So really, it just blossomed from like, I wanted to create things. And this became the thing, the, the best outlet for that. Because I wanted to get, I didn't want to have to rely on too many people. I love it. And so what advice would you give to so many authors that are coming up? Because a lot of people are trying to write books now because the, the self-publishing thing has al allowed that open that door for others. So what advice would you give to an up cupping author or a writer that's trying to get out here and do what you do and have the books and these amazing storylines and be able to make a career out of it? Uh, you suck. You suck. You're, you're probably at some point in the universe the worst writer who has ever existed. But that's okay. Because every writer at some point in the world, from Stephen King on down, has at one point been the worst writer that has ever existed in the entire universe. The <laughs> Sorry. Shh. A sh ton. <laughs> to, to write a bunch, write all different kinds of stuff because you never know what you're like, and just keep finishing stuff. The more stuff you finish, not the more stuff you start, because the finish, the, the, the success is in the rewriting. So the more stuff you finish, the better you become. And the more stuff you finish sets you apart from every other person that writes. Because everybody, something be somewhere between 50 and 59% of people think they have a novel in them. That's half the population. That's 200 and, uh, sorry, 121 million people if it's a low end. Because 121 people are, are the same as you. They all want to write a novel. Very few of those people will write a book, about a million get published a year, which is a lot, but it's way less than 121 million. And then the amount of people that actually have it printed and at shows and all this, like, it's just about narrowing your focus until instead of being one of 121 million or one of 242 million adults, you're one of, you know, 20. Phenomenal. And so what's your ultimate goal? for your novels and for your career and for everything like do you ever want to go back into TV or like you know where would you where would you like to see yourself in your name 5 to 10 years from now I want someone to say man that guy creates cool and does it for a living sorry <laughs> like I just want to keep creating cool stuff and making the kind of money that can allow me to create cool stuff. Like whether it's TV or movies, literally if I make more money, it's just going to mean I can make more stuff. Like, and like my goal is to just make stuff and have a body of work that people look back on and go, that's like a really cool body of work. But more importantly, this guy helped me become the kind of creator that I am. Like, that's why I have my podcast, The Business of Art. That's why I uh, do speaking engagements. I have three this weekend. I try to do 40 or 50 a year if I can. But I, I believe very strongly in the Kevin Spacey quote. You know, when you've reached a level, you're, it's your job to throw the rope back down. So, like, if I can, someone can say, you make awesome stuff and you help me make awesome stuff, too. I just want more cool stuff in the world, whether I'm creating it or you are.
Phenomenal. Thank you so much, Russell. And I am so happy that you were able to survive what you went through and be able to be here today to not only speak with me, but to have a wonderful body of work already. Thanks so much for speaking with us.